Welcome back. Today we'll be doing some more Jurassic Park card game previews. We'll be looking at some Fallen Kingdom species here. Um, the first of which will be Sinoceratops. The Sinoceratops is a starter species, uh, like the Brachiosaurus and Gallimimus we've seen previously. So it's got a fairly low stat total, but it has some sort of nice persistent effect for you to build around. Or to start with, in the case of Sinoceratops, it's more of a build around effect than a uh, nice starting effect like Brachiosaurus. Um, that's kind of the two divisions you get with the starters is things that either support a particular strategy or things that allow you for some sort of early game push like Brocky. Um, so Sinoceratops here falls into the pattern of the other Ceratopsians in the game where they're based around chaos effects. Um, in the case of Sinoceratops, instead of having a chaos effect, it alters chaos effects. Um, and a little peek behind the curtain in previous versions of this card game, this was Dreadnoughtus. Uh, but Dreadnoughtus is being cut as a species from this iteration of the card game. Uh, in part because it's in Dominion and we'll actually have a picture of the canonical Dreadnoughtus or uh, a version of the canonical Dreadnoughtus to use. Which is why I didn't want to include it here. It was included originally in the card game on the basis of it being in Fallen Kingdom as a DNA vial. Um... Other reason I cut that is a little bit of a rebalancing of deck size, changes the distribution of species up, and I ended up actually having to bump a few species out. I think three overall, maybe four. I don't remember exactly. Um, which doesn't result in losing anything with a very rigorous canonical presence. It bumps Peloroplites, which doesn't have a good picture for it anyway. Uh, Tratophonius, which falls under basically the same category. You can get a little bit better picture of the corpse from Fallen Kingdom. Um, but their canonical presence is a little ambiguous anyway, since they're just seen as corpses. And then, of course, the Dreadnoughtus, as mentioned. Um, another thing I want to do for this iteration is I wanted to diversify the subtypes of the starter species a little bit. Um, previously, it was like double sauropods and double hadrosaurs, which I didn't like. Um... So I went ahead and basically assigned one, each subtype, a single starter. So for Ceratopsians, we got Sinoceratops. Uh, we've got Gallimimus for the Ornithomimosaurs or the Theropods, however you want to think about it. I don't remember exactly what subtype I honestly gave it other than, oh, it's a, it's still a Solurosaur, isn't it? Something like that. I, you know what? You can go back and look at the Gallimimus video if you want to see what the subtype is. Point is, it's different. Um... So there'll be one Ceratopsy and one Sauropod, one Hadrosaur, Gallimimus, and then uh, a Thyreophoran, uh, Stego slash Anki, which will be Stegosaurus. At least at this point, it's planned to be Stegosaurus. That one's the one that gives me a little bit more trouble. Um, trying to find a good effect that matches and whatnot. But that's not the point of this video. Um, next up, we got Stiggy Moloch. Stiggy Moloch is a cheaper species. Just a ready cost of five, fame three. Income 1, more of a utility than a uh, showstopper here. Its effect is basically a riff on the Pachycephalosaurus effect. Um, the Pachy keeps your adjacent carnivores in check. The Stiggy Moloch keeps your adjacent herbivores in check. Um, which kind of ties in a little bit too to the cage situation that we see the Stiggy Moloch in. You know, the only, the only situation we really encounter it for any uh, meaningful purpose. Actually, do you see Stiggy Molochs in the Stampede scene in Fallen Kingdom? I actually don't know now off the top of my head. Maybe you only see it in Lockwood Manor? Point is, the Stiggy Moloch in Lockwood Manor is, is in an adjacent cage, right? So an adjacency effect ties in really nicely here with uh, what the dinosaur does in the film. Maybe the reduced ferocity for adjacent herbivores doesn't exactly represent the outcome of the Stiggy Moloch uh, in, in Fallen Kingdom, but the adjacency effect at least does. Um... After this, we have Baryonyx. So, Baryonyx, we're looking at a Spinosaurid here. Uh, now we're dealing with a higher income and fame total and higher rarity cost to balance that. Uh, Baryonyx does not get its stats reduced when it takes damage when it's injured. This is referencing how the Baryonyx in the film in the uh, bunker scene gets burnt by lava and doesn't seem to really care <laughs> and just keeps coming. So in that same vein, the Baryonyx here just kind of shrugs off damage. doesn't get those normal penalties that most injured dinosaurs do. Uh, very resilient. The second part here is the kind of standard, a variation on the standard Spinosaurid ability. 
So we've got three Spinosaurids in the card game at release. Spinosaurus, Baryonyx, and Suchomimus. Each one of them has a fishing effect tied to it where they pull cards out of your uh, trash pile. So the Spino being a headliner species pulls it to your hand. The Baryonyx being a regular species um, and not taking that valuable headliner slot instead uh, fishes that card into your deck. Um, so it's less useful directly than the Spinosaurus, but it is more, it's easier to slot it into a deck in particular. Um, and then the Suchomimus is a third variation on that fishing effect, which we'll see in a future video probably. After this, we have the Allosaurus, uh, originally a Fallen Kingdom species. I've gone with the Battle of Big Rock representation here for the Allosaurus. And let me tell you, sourcing a decent screenshot for the Battle of Big Rock Allosaurus within Battle at Big Rock, not easy. Uh, this is the second image I've used for this since the original iteration. The original one I was not happy with because it, it was too, it was maybe a little bit easier to see detail, but it showed less of the dinosaur and it was not as obviously the Allosaurus. This picture I like because you can see the the horn on the head, you can see the teeth, you can see you know the posture, it gets a little bit better idea of the body shape of the Allosaurus, although it is still a very dark image. And I've done some post-processing lightening it up here, which has resulted in artifacting a little bit too. So I'm trying to balance basically making the image bright enough to see some detail and keeping the artifacting minimal from uh up in the contrast um so yeah i've considered bumping the allosaurus or using the trailer shot from dominion on it now um but it, it should be in here it's in fallen kingdom battle of big rock is considered part of the release um the release basis whatever you want to call it it's part of the set basically so it had to re it really did have to be in here um what I've been considering doing is for some dinosaurs like this Allosaurus, uh, and maybe a few other dinosaurs, uh, is doing alt arts. So we'll have a Dominion Allosaurus with the same text and effect, but a different picture, just for fun. Um, and you can pick between using the original or the uh, Dominion version, just for whichever card art you prefer. I was also thinking about doing that for different dinosaurs with variations, like Lost World versus Jurassic World Stegosaurus, the new Dominion Parasaurs, that kind of stuff. So you'd have the exact same card, the exact same effect. You just pick which version of the card art you like. The Allosaurus here, let's talk a little bit about its effect at least. Uh, another bigger species like the Baryonyx in the next one that we're getting to. Higher security ferocity requirements, but you get that higher fame and income totals. Um, Allosaurus here is a Carnosaur as its subtype, whereas... Um, the the carnosaurs in terms of um dinosaur typing is basically that allosaurus megalosaurus branch of the family tree of, of theropods um so the carnosaurs you can expect to show up in the car game are metriacanthosaurus allosaurus um eventually giganotosaurus everything from that that branch i'm debating the monolophosaurus uh when camp cretaceous camp cretaceous gets added Monolophosaurus is a little bit ambiguous in terms of its placement in the dinosaur family tree, um, which is why I'm hesitant to add it to Carnosauria here. Um, I also, I like that Solarosaurs, uh, the Tyrannosaur branch, has a mixture of large and small species. We've got Tyrannosaurus, we've got Compsognathus, we've got Pro or uh, Proceratosaurus, rather. That's a fun mixture of species of different scales. And if Carnosauria ends up being the same thing, where there's some small ones and some big ones, it makes it a little less interesting in a, some, in, in a sense. So I think it might be interesting to err on the side of not including Monolophosaurus to keep Carnosauria towards the larger theropods. Um, so yeah, anyway, Allosaurus' effect here uh, is an action, which I don't, we haven't seen before. We haven't, there aren't too many of those tied to species, uh, giving you an action to perform uh, during your action phase, but Allosaurus is one that has that. Um, the action here is you get the trash any species card from your hand to draw two additional cards. So basically you're trading a dinosaur you may not be able to bring into your park or want to bring into your park for some fresh draws to cycle some stuff out. Um, and the theming here, the reason this is an Allosaurus ability is it's kind of tying into the major scene with the Allosaurus in Battle of Big Rock being it fighting the Pseudoceratops. The aloe is going after another species. Um, 
hunting it basically so this is kind of just a riff on sort of a hunting type ability even though um you as the park owner get the benefit from the the quote-unquote hunt and not the allosaurus obviously because the allosaurus doesn't care about drawing cards um it's maybe not the most thematic ability uh but it's an ability i liked so it's kind of a case of having an interesting card ability and finding which dinosaur I thought it fit the best with that I couldn't find a better, more thematic card effect for. And so it ended up, I think, being a pretty fitting effect to put on Allosaurus. Next is Carnotaurus. Um, once again, a fairly medium scale dinosaur here. We're going up a little higher in rarity, um, which is basically just tied to the effect. Um, so Carnotaurus here has a little bit of an interesting quirk in the sense that it's got a very high ferocity total and a very low security rating. Um, so you can keep it contained pretty decently, but when it does break out, you're taking a lot of damage, which kind of ties towards its aggression, uh, in Fallen Kingdom and in Camp Cretaceous, basically. Um, the Carnotaurus was contained in a, a separate security paddock, so you kind of make an argument there that well i guess the security containment thing is all right so you can contain it um maybe you argue you can't contain it very well because it escapes but you know if every dinosaur had pretty evenly balanced ferocity and security it wouldn't be terribly interesting so it's fun to have something that skews more towards one than the other um carnotaurus is considered a ceratosaurid here uh ceratosauria being the predecessors to the abelosaurs um, it pains me a bit to not have Abelosaurs uh, represented as their own subtype here, but uh, it I needed to err on the side of broader categories to get more usage out of the categories that do exist. If I go hyper specific, you'd have ones and two one or two dinosaurs that represent any given category. It wouldn't be great, um, so that's why we're we're sticking with the broader category of Ceratosaurid instead of the more uh, derived abelosaurs. Um, Carnotaurus was a card, a species that provided a challenge for coming up with a card effect for quite a while. Um, despite it having some fairly memorable scenes in Fallen Kingdom, they're just kind of fighting scenes, right? Hunting the people at the gyrosphere, getting bodied by the Rex, uh, taking an arm at the end of the film, that kind of stuff. So what I ended up going with is the idea of the See, so the Carnotaurus shows up in that gyrosphere scene, right? Um, which ties into paddock upgrades. So that kind of got me thinking in that direction of some interaction with paddock upgrades. The Carnotaurus was aggressive, so that got me thinking in the direction of, okay, interacting with the opponent's paddock upgrades in some way. Um, so what I ended up going with was a disabled effect on some paddock upgrades in Arrival Park. I went for two because it's got two horns. That's That's the thought there. It's, uh, you know, tiny pieces of theming that kind of connect to make it the overall effect a little bit more themed to the dinosaur. It's not perfect, but, you know, it gets the job done. Um, so disabling, I don't remember if that's ever come up in our previous preview videos. Basically, it's it's a, a temporary uh, shutdown of a, an asset. So if I disable a paddock upgrade, that paddock upgrade's flipped over. No longer applies until it is restored by a card effect. Um... And sometimes those card effects are connected to the thing that is doing the disabling. Uh, and if not that, then you will have to use some sort of repair type action card or effect to restore the disabled upgrade. So it is less of a penalty than straight up destroying or discarding or trashing a paddock upgrade. Um, but it is still a pretty impactful thing. And that's really why Carnotaurus here costs nine. Like the Carnotaurus's stats are pretty much the same as the berry and the aloe. Um, but you got that little bit of bump in rarity cost because of that. Like, Allosaurus gets a bump in rarity cost because card draw is valuable. Baryonyx is kind of the baseline you can think of here. Four fame, two income, kind of a two, four, three, three type split on stats is about seven for rarity. Allosaurus is plus one because of card draw. Carnotaurus is plus two for the disabling. Uh, further balance a little bit by kind of having uh, a little bit more danger in terms of its ferocity being five here instead of a two four or a three three type split the two five splits a little harsher uh, generally speaking although the counterpoint to that is you can offset that more easily with security reductions so the ferocity may not apply um, our final species for this video is indoraptor this is our headliner for fallen kingdom 
Uh, it is I, the most expensive species in the game at 16 staggering rarity. Uh, for an income total of zero, with five fame, five ferocity, five security, this is one of the most difficult dinosaurs to contain. It's one of the most dangerous dinosaurs when it does escape, comparable to the Carnotaurus. Um, and the big thing with Indoraptor uh, is that it's pushing an income strategy. That makes it different than the other headliner species in the game. Um, in this case, uh, Indoraptor is kind of the one you'd want to go for if you're going for an in a secondary income victory over actually exhibiting enough fame. Um, even though Indoraptor's ability here does actually tie into your exhibited fame. But the thing is, is you don't need 15 or 12 fame, whatever I decide to go for, for the exact victory conditions in the revised um, deck scaling, which is probably 12. It was 15 in the larger deck size. Uh, but now that I've reduced the deck size, that reduces accordingly to probably 12. I still need to play test that a little bit more to make sure 12 is right. But it's looking like 12 fame. But even if you're sitting here at like 8 fame, like a base income of 8 is staggeringly huge. Allowing you to very quickly accelerate towards that end game of, of accumulating a lot of money. And that ties into Indoraptor because of the whole auction scenario, right? The Indoraptor's presence in the film is a moneymaker, basically. The, the um, kind of crown jewel of the auction... Um, the idea for Lockwood Manor, the whole lab situation of cloning the Indoraptor as a weapon and selling it to the highest bidder or whatever, that all ties into income and not, you know, a park scenario. So it needed an ability that really tied into that, of it not being a dinosaur that was made for being exhibited in a park. Uh, really the only dinosaur at the time of Fallen Kingdom that has that distinction. Um, the subtypes here on Indoraptor, it's got hybrid, of course, to dictate, you know, that it is a hybrid dinosaur, like Indominus Rex and uh, whatever other hybrids make it in, Scorpius Rex and the Spinoceratops when we get to Camp Cretaceous at some point, of course. But uh, for now, it'll just be the Indominus and the Indoraptor. Um, it's a theropod, of course, and Indoraptor gets the distinction of being a raptor. Generally speaking, the hybrids, I'm not going to go crazy with the subtypes on them. Like Indominus Rex could be a Ceratosaurid, a Carnosaur, and a Solurosaur, and a Raptor. I'm not going to give it all those subtypes. Uh, we're going to skew away from having any other subtypes beyond hybrid for the most part. Indoraptor, though, has Raptor in the title. It is a Raptor. Um, same thing with, like, Sinospino or Spinoceratops. That'll probably be a Ceratopsian and probably not a Spinosaurid because while it does have, you know, the sail and exhibit some Spinosaurid traits, I believe it eats fish, right? I think I remember that. Uh, it's very much a Ceratopsian body plan. It, it's so we'll stick with that. Like, really, they get like one clade subtype for like their dominant um, kind of body plan, right? So Raptor here, Indominus Rex probably is not going to get anything beyond theropod and hybrid, just because it's got too many things that all mix together. It doesn't. It doesn't ascribe itself particularly to Solurosauria or Carnosauria or Ceratosauria. It combines elements of all of them. So uh, Scorpius Rex is a little bit maybe, or maybe a different case where that's got stronger Ceratosauria traits, Abelosaur traits, and maybe a little bit more Raptor traits. That's one I have no real idea yet how I feel about assigning that sometimes. But uh, Camp Cretaceous is not going to be touched upon probably until the series finishes. Maybe after Dominion update is released. So it's going to be a while on that. Um, so yeah, that'll be it for this preview video. Uh, until next time.